In this part of the lecture, we'll be discussing the news vendor model. The news vendor model is a basic and fundamental mathematical model in operations management. And it is important because it deals with the problem of how to determine the optimal inventory level when you have to order before the demand is realized and the demand is random, and the product also is perishable, meaning it loses value if you can't sell it. So this news vendor model is also sometimes referred to as the newsboy model, or as the single period model. So let's first take a step back to see what is a newsboy or a newspaper hawker. And in this picture, which was taken in 1908, more than 100 years ago, you see a bunch of newsboys. So they look to be roughly, I think, my guess is 12 to 16 years old. And these boys are in New York City and walking around trying to sell newspapers. In those days, it was hard to earn money. And being a newsboy is a job that people can could take up without having many skills. So it was hard work and the pay was pretty low. If you try to look for a more modern version of a newspaper hawker, you might see something like this, newspaper hawkers in Mexico City. And these three people seem to be working for different companies, so they have different uniforms. So as I said before, a newspaper hawker or newsboy is a person who sells newspapers Typically, they don't have a fixed newsstand, so they can walk and travel around. Newsboys are basically independent, uh, on, like owners of a small business in a sense. So they buy the newspapers from the wholesalers and they try to sell them. So they're not employees, meaning they don't earn a salary. They, the, whatever they earn is based on what their own ability to buy and uh, to sell newspapers. So if they can sell well, that's great. But if they can't sell, they basically lose money. So obviously, it was not an easy job. The pay was fairly low. And when the news boys were unlucky enough not to be able to sell all of their papers, they would often go around late at night crying out extra, extra, read all about it to try to sell every last newspaper to help to make ends meet because even a little bit counts when your pay is very, so low. Okay, let's take a step back up and take a look at what is the situation faced by a newspaper vendor. So basically, when the newspaper vendor is considering that day's newspapers, he or she needs to decide how many copies to stock. And one tricky part is that demand is uncertain. You don't know how many will how many people want to buy the newspapers. If there was a big headline such as World War II starts, then lots of people want to buy the newspapers. But if there's nothing interesting, then the sales could be fairly low or if it's raining and people don't show up. Another complication is that if the papers were not sold, they are basically worthless at the end of the day. So if you can't sell the newspapers today, by tomorrow, today's newspapers becomes yesterday's newspaper. And nobody really wants to buy yesterday's news. They want to buy today's news. So that's there's a pr risk that if they order too many newspapers and they can't sell them, they will eat heavy losses. So here is an overview of the mathematical notation and how the news vendor model works. Uh, so the three key parameters are the selling price P, the procurement cost C, and the salvage value S. So basically, each newspaper is bought for C. You sell it for P, and if you can't sell it, you get S back. And let me go to this slide to talk a bit about the salvage value. So salvage value basically means the money you get back if you cannot sell the product. And 
usually the salvage value S is less than the procurement cost C. So if you think of the newspapers as an example, and you can't, and let's say you have leftover unsold newspapers, you can typically sell them to, for example, people working in the markets to wrap vegetables on, or meat or other raw food. Or in the UK, for example, it was quite common for a long time for people who sold fish and chips to sell them wrapped up in newspapers. Of course, nowadays we don't do this because newspapers can have a lot of chemicals that might be hazard harmful to people's health. But in the old days, that's one way that people salvaged these uh, unsold newspapers. So the, if the newsboy was able to sell it, these unsold newspapers to someone in, working in the markets, they get a little bit of money back. So better than nothing, but definitely not as much as how much he or she paid for the newspapers in the first place. All right, and how the sequence of events works is the following. The news vendor needs to submit an order and receive the inventory. During the sales period, the news vendor sells as much products as possible and either sells out or is unable to sell, finish selling because there's just not enough demand. If there's leftover inventory, the news vendor will salvage any leftover inventory at the end of the sales period. Okay, let's go through a small example to show you how this works. Suppose a newspaper sold for $5, it costs $4 and is salvaged for $1. And suppose you decided to order 70 copies. Let's say demand is 50. In that case, you can sell 50 and there are 20 units that you can't sell. So you paid 70 times 4, but you paid it out, so that's why it's minus. So this is how much you paid. This is how much you collected from the sold newspapers. This is how much you salvaged. You can calculate it out and you get minus 10. So you lost money. Boo hoo. In the second case, the demand is 80. So in this case, even the demand is 80, you only have 70 units of newspapers. So you can only sell 70. And you have no, no salvage units. Again, you can calculate the profit, which in this case is 70. So you feel happy because you made a good profit. So in the news vendor model, there are two key assumptions that demand is random and that there's no inventory replenishment. So why are these assumptions important? If the demand were deterministic, so if you know, okay, there is going to be 100 customers, then you order exactly 100 newspapers because you don't want to order more because you can't sell them any extras. You don't want to order less because you, if you, because you know there's going to be more demand and you can sell it. So order exactly the amount that demand is going to be. The second assumption is for no replenishment. If you can replenish your inventory during the sales period, then only order a little bit and keep on ordering more whenever you're running out. So basically this allows you to order exactly what the demand is going to be or pretty close to it. So the news vendor problem is interesting because you only have one chance or one shot to make an order decision and you do this before you know what the demand is going to be. And you also can't get any more inventory if you run out. So that's what makes the problem interesting. All right, so to make this a bit more concrete, we're going to do a small demonstration in class where we play the news vendor game. Or rather, I call it a bakery game, but it's the same thing. It's just an example of the news vendor problem. So suppose you're the manager of a store selling pineapple buns. Here's a picture of a pineapple bun. 
A pineapple bun is delicious. It's a Hong Kong style pastry, and it's called pineapple buns, not because it is made using pineapple as an ingredient, but because the crispy things on the top kind of looks like a pineapple. So let's say you have to decide how many buns to order, and each bun costs four dollars and is sold for ten dollars. And buns that are unsold are basically discarded at the lost, so the salvage value is zero. So how many buns should you order? Obviously, it depends on what the demand is going to be. For this example, let's assume that the demand is normally distributed. The mean is a hundred, and the standard deviation is thirty. And here are twenty realizations of demand to give you a sense of. How the demand is. So on average, the demand is about a hundred, but sometimes the demand is much higher. Like one hundred sixty-seven is the biggest number. Sometimes the demand is much lower. In this case, fifty-four. But remember, most of the time, the demand is about a hundred. So all right, let's actually do this in class. I'm going to get a few volunteers, and we'll do the demo. Demo done. So, what did you learn from this bakery or news vendor game? So, first, when you order too little, you don't actually lose money, but you miss profit because there's demand you did not meet, and you are not able to sell and collect that profit. When you order too much, you actually lose money on products that you made or bought, but you couldn't sell. So what you really want to do is to find optimal order quantity, which is kind of a, the just right amount that's not too little and not too much. And the news vendor model basically is a scientific method to give help you to calculate how to strike the balance between those two extremes and maximize your expected profit. Okay, so here are the four steps to solve the news vendor problem. The first step is to compute the underage cost, which is the cost of ordering one unit too little, and you can think of it also as the profit margin. So every time you buy a newspaper and you sell it, how much profit do you make? The second step is to compute the overage cost, which is the cost of ordering one unit too much, or you can think of it as if you Bought a newspaper and you couldn't sell it. How much money do you lose? The next step is to compute the target service level or the critical fractile alpha star. And basically, this is the probability that inventory is sufficient to meet demand. <coughs> the last step is to compute the optimal order quantity. Using the inverse CDF, and at when you order the amounts, the probability that that demand is less than the inventory, or the inventory is greater than demand, is alpha star. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this notation f minus one. Basically, this is the notation for the inverse cumulative distribution function. And this is something that you would learn from statistics. And I think you may not have taken this course, business statistics, yet. But from what I know of most business students, statistics or math is not their favorite subject. And this kind of they have a horrified face when they ever think about math. Okay, so. This is not a math class, so I don't want to talk about math. Basically, but basically, what you need to know is the following: the target service level or the critical fractal is the probability that your order quantity is greater than demand. And if you you order using the inverse CDF and that probability, then your order quantity gives you. An in-stock probability of 
the probability that you put in. So if you or at, if you increase the probability alpha star, your order quantity also increases. So for example, if you order based on this, maybe let me write that down just to make sure it's clear. So if you order Q goes then seventy percent of the time is greater than the right so basically the order quantities are the the f inverse gives you the percentiles of the demand right so if you order based on the 70th percentile of demand 70 percent of the time your inventory is greater than the demand so for the inverse cdf you can actually compute it using Google Sheets and for your quiz since the quiz is online you will be able to do to open a Google Sheet and compute it if you had to take an exam or a quiz offline I would basically provide a table to you showing you the values of the inverse CDF for different probabilities so basically, you can do some very basic coding in Google Sheets, basically just using a formula. And let's open it just to show you. So if you open this, so for example, you need to type equals the name of the function, which is known in the probability you want. For example, let's just say 0 0.7, the mean, let's say it's 100 standard deviation let's say is 20 and that's the inverse cdf for this probability this mean and the standard deviation all right okay so let's actually discuss in class how to solve the breakery game that I prevent presented earlier which is this one how do we compute the optimal order quantity? And we'll also discuss in class how to solve this, how to interpret the solution of the news vendor model. All right. Now that we've done that, let's conclude. So in practice, you actually won't be asked to solve the news vendor problem or the news vendor model at work. The reason is that companies basically use ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning soft Systems, which have modules to determine the optimal inventory levels for you. So because these sort of things are done better using mathematics and computers, typically companies prefer to use uh, you know, computerized processes rather than manual processes to solve this sort of problems. However, you should have some intuition from today's lecture about how the optimal inventory level is affected by parameters of the problem, such as the cost, the selling price, the salvage value, the value of demand, and so on. And the news vendor model is, is applicable to more general situations where demand is perishable, for example, if the Gap, which is a fashion retailer, sells seasonal clothing, clothing that they can't sell has to be salvaged. So they have to take into account the probability of clothing being unsold and how much they get back from salvage. Or the Taste Market supermarket, the Taste Supermarket it has, a, has a rather nice sushi and sashimi section, and sometimes if that they can't sell that sushi or sashimi, they basically have to throw it away the next day. Uh, so these are these two examples are where inventory is perishable. Even for non-perishable inventory, there's actually the news vendor model actually is used in the formula for calculating the safety stock at a retail store where you take into account the holding costs, 
for excess inventory and the unmet or the lost sales kind of cost. So when we don't cover this in this course since this is a more basic course, but that's some that's a real life application to, which is basically pretty much for all regular all stores that receive regular shipments even if the inventory is not perishable. So all right, so hopefully you appreciate how the news vendor model gives you some a bit more understanding about how companies deal with problem, situations where inventory is perishable and even it applies to situations where inventory is not necessarily perishable. All right, that's all. See you next time. Bye.